against California. Meanwhile, another Californian gets ready to take center stage as Sugar Shane Mosley of Pomona gets ready to come into the ring against Australian challenger Shannon Taylor. Let's look ahead to some upcoming programs on HBO. For boxing, many of the biggest and brightest stars in the sport will appear on HBO and TVKO pay-per-view in the coming months. Between now and May 26, you'll see... Oscar De La Hoya, on March 24, returning to fight for the first time in eight months, he'll be taking on the dangerous and often bloody Arturo Gatti. April 7, Prince Nassim Hamed takes on his toughest task yet, Marco Antonio Barrera, in a pay-per-view matchup. April 21, heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis, coming off his shutout of David Tua, takes on Hasim Rachman in Johannesburg, South Africa. May 12, Felix Trinidad kicks off his end of the World Middleweight Unification Series, facing William Joppy on TVKO pay-per-view. And May 26, Floyd Mayweather Jr., in his first fight since his devastation of Diego Corrales, takes on Carlos Hernandez. HBO, the heart and soul of boxing. Welcome back to Ringside at Caesars Palace. In every sport, there are training grounds and proving grounds, which, because of their association with championship-caliber athletes, resonate through the history of the sport. In boxing, the training camp of the moment is a place in California which is only a few miles and yet light years from Los Angeles. Hidden in California's San Bernardino Mountains is a training oasis for today's boxing elite. To those in the know, it's referred to simply as Big Bear. I think that Big Bear is made for high quality boxing. Uh, you know, people that are professionals and are really serious about what they're doing, Big Bear will be the place to get away and seclude yourself. It, it kind of gives you that rocky feeling where uh, you want to go outside and just run and put a log on your shoulders and just go out there and, uh, and, uh, and run the mountains. This place is unbelievable. It's the best camp I've ever been to. It's the most beautiful camp. In the tradition established by Joe Lewis and Sugar Ray Robinson at Pompton Lakes in the 40s and 50s, and later maintained by Muhammad Ali in the Poconos, Big Bear offers familiar training facilities, a Spartan feel, and a useful absence of nightlife. Well, there's not really much to do in Big Bear. That's probably one of the good points about it. A lot of sleep. <laughs> a lot of sleep, man. Just kind of playing cards and just relaxing and working. I, I'm basically working out all the time. We're human beings and we need things to, to occupy, you know, to keep occupied and then just do things, you know. I mean, we just don't want to train and, and once we finish training, I mean, what are we going to do? That's it, you know. Walk the forest, talk to some trees or look for some reindeers or something. And go for big long walks at night and stuff like that. You might bump into a bear now and again or something like that, a big bear. But uh, that's it. Located 70 miles east of Los Angeles, the Big Bear Boxing and Fitness Center stimulates fighters to embrace the mentality of the training camp. You come in here and you really want to work out. You know, you see the weights, you see the ring, you see the speed bag, the bags, and, and you want to get in there and uh, do your thing. All you need is a bare essentials. You don't need high-tech, uh, you know, equipment. You know, if you think about it, back in the old school days, that's all they had. Boxing gyms were, you know, were dirty and old and, and uh, smelled. And, you know, I kind of like it that way, you know. You get down back to, to the essence of boxing. And as boxing training learns from modern science, fighters here benefit from training at 7,000 feet above sea level. You know, you get up here and, and you get high altitude, you know, um, uh, you make your body create more red blood cells. And when you get down to a... Uh, regular sea level you're like you know i could do 30 rounds you know yeah i could have went another three four or five rounds after i fought the in the 12th round i think by training up here i recuperate a lot faster in the rest periods so i can go all out and recuperate go all out and recuperate the mountains of big bear offer these high profile boxing superstars yet another advantage a quiet escape from the demands of celebrity you get away from everything it's like being in another planet you know it's like you know, you get away from everything. If I were to train in Los Angeles right now, um, it would be a bit difficult because uh, there's a lot of people who, of course, want to take pictures and, and they want your autograph, and it's really kind of hard to focus. My favorite reason is the isolation, getting away from everybody and just concentrating on what I do best, and that's boxing. Shane Mosley and today's other boxing stars are by no means guaranteed victory because they train at Big Bear. But their trip into the mountains does prove 
that isolation and determination both contribute to bringing a fighter to his highest level of performance. All very well and good, but I didn't see anybody strapping a car to their back and hauling it up a hill the way you do, George. <laughs> One of a kind. Well, they, can, they, they get it good up there, though. Oh, no, they work hard. And uh, Shane Mosley is a fighter who's so good and so clearly at the peak of his career that it's customary to say at this moment, probably only Shane could beat Shane by losing focus, by creating bad habits or not training the way he has in the past. You see any sign of that happening? His number one main asset has always been the relationship with the father. Mm -hmm. This guy's very close with his dad. You, you go to a party, even his dad is with him at the party. So as long as he has that asset, he's going to be top for a long time. He and Felix Trinidad, both, their, their fathers they have taught them dad. to treat this sport with sacred respect. And Larry Merchant, uh, meanwhile, Shannon Taylor is a great story. Remarkably appealing kid who makes a long trip from Australia here for a fight that he says he's going to win, and the odds makers say, no way. Is there, is there a chance that Taylor has even a remote possibility of testing Mosley here tonight? Jim, he is an intriguing long shot. He knows how to fight. He's strong, tough, says, I'll die to win. And he actually wants to fight Shane Mosley. Shane Mosley's a beautiful person. I, I actually spent some time with Shane over there. He told me if he wins the title, he'll give me a crack. And he's getting his crack. There is a kind of down under Mad Max madness about Shannon Taylor. He's the son and grandson of coal miners. He's been arrested innumerable times for fighting in public without being paid. He once owned a Bordello, but he also once ran 120 miles over three days, 40 miles a day, to raise money for charity. He is a hell of a story, a kind of unknown force of nature who's forced himself onto center stage. But he's fighting a brilliant force of nurture. Yeah. In Shane Mosley. Yeah, George made that point. Owned a Bordello. <laughs> Jack Dempsey worked in Bordellos, but this takes it to a whole new level. It does. It's the entrepreneurial age. Well, let's take a look at the tail of the tape for Shannon Bordello owner Taylor and Sugar Shane Mosley. And you can see that Mosley, even though he's two inches shorter, has a six inch reach advantage. Those long Mosley arms helped him to beat De La Hoya. They both weighed in at 147 pounds, and by tonight, Mosley tiny bit of a surprise to me, outweighs Taylor, 159 to 157. Punch that numbers, Larry. Once again, we have fighters with numbers against different classes of competition. But as we just saw in the previous fight, those classes of competition didn't mean a whole hell of a lot. Mosley is a more active fighter. Taylor is a very well-schooled, uh, controlled fighter. Power punches, Mosley throws a few more. Taylor can crack. Rolls it about with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Sugar Shane Mosley, Shannon Taylor fight is scheduled for 12 rounds in the Unified Rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule, only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. All right, thank you, Harold. And as you watch tonight, we invite you to log on to hbo.com slash boxing. Among the features, the extremely popular live trainer audio. When we go to the corners, you decide which trainer to listen to. And it's always fascinating to listen to the interplay between Jack Mosley and his son Shane. So calm, so measured, so professional from round to round. Here is Shannon Taylor. Jim, when this fight was announced and put on the front page of his hometown newspaper, his mom said that's the first time he's been on the front page when he wasn't in trouble.